Testing, one, two, three.
I will make you as a light for the nations. That my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, look mercifully upon your people, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is deceitfully above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? 
I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he is raised, Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have, <clears throat> excuse me, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
be with you. And with your spirit. This is the Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who were rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite children who would like to go out for the children's homily. If you come forward at this time, we'd love to pray a prayer of blessing over you. If you, would, um, if you would go to your service booklets and turn to page 9, and you can join me in that blessing. And together, Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joyful presence of children and have laid on us the duty to train and equip them so that they may grow into your fullness of their calling as your redeemed people. As we, the body of your Son, Jesus, take up this joyful work, strengthen us, give us wisdom and patience and compassion, and as they grow up in our midst, may we teach them by our words and example to love whatever is just true and good, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, a brief note at the beginning of the sermon. Earlier this week, Father Scott encouraged me to listen to an excellent sermon by Bishop Robert Barron on today's text. And I found the sermon really illustrative and uh, illuminative and, and uh, clear and helpful, and I couldn't get it out of my head, so at a certain point I just decided I'm going to follow this general outline. Um, but I wanted to attribute that on the, on the front end um, to make sure I, I uh, nod to Bishop Barron. So this week's uh, text, um, sometimes over the course of our, our lectionary cycle, we'll have some readings that aren't always connected to each other in the Old Testament and the New, and other times, especially during the um, High Holy Days and, uh, you know, um, Red Letter Days, uh, a lot of kind of connection. And, um, and this week, 
we find a really wonderful juxtaposition, especially between Jeremiah and the psalm and Luke's gospel. And so today I want to kind of show how these connect and, and weave together. Beginning with Jeremiah 17. Cursed is the man, cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. Right off the bat, the prophet seems pretty negative here, huh? Jeremiah seems pretty negative. Does that mean that we shouldn't trust in human beings at all? That we shouldn't have a trusting relationship with our, our mother or father or our spouse or our friends or family? Is that what Jeremiah is suggesting? Don't trust in human beings. The answer is no, I don't think so. And, and one thing that's helpful to understand is this word heart in the, the second part of the sentence. In the ancient Near East, uh, also in the, the New Testament context as well, this, this idea of heart is that um, this is the organizing center of one's life. Jeremiah is talking about the center, the core of what it means to be a person, what matters most to you at your core. There was a, a sort of different anatomical understanding at the time, right, where instead of understanding the brain as governing all body's functions, it was thought to be the heart. And so when people spoke of the heart, they, talk, they were speaking about one's moral, intellectual, emotional center, the core of oneself. So for Jeremiah to talk about the heart here and to say, cursed is the one who trusts in people, he's not saying that no one can trust in people. What he's saying is, you know, where do you place your heart? Where is your heart rooted? Where is the core of yourself rooted? It's not that you can't have a whole range of interests. Consider instead where you place your allegiances. If your allegiance belongs to anything in this world, you are in a bad spiritual place. That's what he's suggesting here. That's who is cursed. This is also nothing against the material world. The biblical authors, Paul, is often uh, said when he talks about spirit and flesh to be kind of this dualist, but the biblical authors assume that the spirit and physical is joined together, is united. So this isn't saying human bodies, human flesh is bad. Instead, Jeremiah is encouraging us to ask this question, where does your true allegiance and hope lie? When your heart is ordered correctly, everything else falls into right order. Your relationships, your, uh, the, the way you approach money, the way you approach work, how much energy you pour into those kinds of things. Everything falls into the right order if your heart, if the core of yourself is rooted where it needs to be rooted. And so Jeremiah is asking us, is encouraging us to ask ourselves, to, to whom or to what does your heart belong? Of course, we're all sinners, and we tend to have divided hearts at best, even as Christians. Yes, we're, we're uh, united to Christ, we're members of the body, but we also have divided hearts that are drawn towards money, drawn towards political allegiances, drawn towards shopping or pleasure or sports or entertainment or whatever it may be. Jesus in Matthew 5 in the Sermon of the Mount says, Blessed are the pure in heart. Another way of understanding pure in heart is blessed are the single-hearted. Blessed are those who don't have these kinds of divided hearts. Whose hearts blessed are those whose hearts belong uniquely to God. Again, this doesn't mean that they can't have other interests, that you can't have other interests. It just means that we are blessed when our hearts are rooted in God himself. So to continue with Jeremiah's words, Cursed is the man, cursed is the one who trusts in people and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. This one's like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. The one whose heart turns from the Lord is as dried up as the desert itself. What is your heart like? when you belong to something other than God. Our hearts are dried up. We are dried up. A lot of us know what this is like. We are like trees out in the desert, the heat and the sand beating against us. We have not rooted ourselves in the deep life of God. And I think each of us know what this is like 
in our own lives. We know what the experience of being dry in the desert is like. Maybe it's depression, maybe we isolate ourselves, maybe we numb ourselves to, to pain or whatever it is. Each of us have our, our own version of what this looks like. Maybe we pretend we're great. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. For Jeremiah to use this word trust, it's another way of him saying, where do you place your heart? Where do you place the core of yourself? What do you ultimately rely on? The Lord. The one who trusts in the Lord is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. The one who trusts in the Lord, whose heart is in the Lord, they put their roots into the source of life itself. When the drought comes, they are still able to thrive. Failure comes, sickness comes, death of a loved one comes. Whatever it may be, that barren and lifeless desert surrounds on all side. But we are all right because we are planted by these running waters, by the living water. This image reminds me of, of uh, about a year ago or maybe nine months ago or so, I preached on um, the G- Jesus in, in the boat, asleep in the boat as the storm is around him. And you could, it's kind of a similar picture, the, the desert heat the sand, the chaos around him, Jesus in the storm, but the plant rooted, Christ rooted, Jesus himself asleep, resting in God. Okay, so this is Jeremiah. Now let's transition to Luke's sermon on the plain in chapter 6. Jesus lifts his eyes to us, to his disciples, and this is what he says. Blessed are those who are poor, for the kingdom of God is theirs. Does this mean that poor people are the only ones who God blesses and loves? No, of course not. Though God certainly delights in those who are wanting, and in many ways, being in that place of true reliance on God, people understand what it means to trust God. Poor people understand what it means to trust God more than many of us who have more than we'd ever need. But that's not what this means. It doesn't mean that you could only be blessed if you're poor. Rather, blessed are those who do not plant themselves, who do not root themselves in the desert soil of wealth. That's what Jesus is saying here. Though it may not look like it, wealth is a desert sand. It's the way of death, of being dried up. It doesn't mean you can't care about what's in your 401k, right? It's not what I'm saying. But if you plant yourself there, that's the way of death. Blessed you are you if you are not rooting your heart in this reality. Jesus goes on. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Should you feel guilty for eating that large breakfast this morning? No, that's not the point. But how blessed are you if your heart does not belong to the sensual pleasures of this world, if you're not rooting yourself in how full your belly is or how satisfied you are by the sensual pleasures all around you? Blessed are you who are planted in something that satisfies beyond your next meal. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Is Jesus suggesting that you should be a church of Eeyore's? No, he's not promoting depression or anything like that. But we don't plant ourselves next to the desert or in the desert, in the dry sand of good feelings. Feelings come and go, but there are a lot of people, and there are a lot of people in our society who are addicted to good feelings. Many of us may be addicted to these things. But blessed are those who don't place all their hope in these fleeting emotions, but in the eternal promises and changelessness of God himself. Finally, blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Does that mean you should go seek a fight or it's good if people hate you? No, of course not. You know the answer to that question by now. But don't plant your heart 
in the soil of the honor that the world gives you and acclaim and celebration. Many of us get addicted to these things, to, to words, to attention, to titles. Us clergy like to pretend we can't get addicted to these kinds of things, but we know how to too. You could find all kinds of crazy titles, the most very reverend doctor, canon, whatever, father, so-and-so. We, we have our titles too. Look who's popular in the culture today, like the celebrities of today, right? The most, are these the, the most gifted or loving people? No, we don't honor the most gifted or loving or generous people. Often we honor the opposite. But Jesus says instead, blessed are those who don't root their hearts in frivolous and passing acclaim. Now we see, now we see that Jesus is making the same point that Jeremiah and the psalmist is making. The psalmist uses that same imagery of the tree planted by water. To whom does your heart belong? To whom do our hearts belong? Unless we plant ourselves in the Lord, we become dried up trees. But if we do root ourselves in the Lord, if our very spiritual food and drink is Jesus Himself, if our roots are sucking up the the water, the living waters of Christ, if we delight in our Lord day and night, meditate on His Word, communion with Him in prayer, love our neighbors as ourselves, receive the sacraments, if we truly plant ourselves in Jesus and in His church, then we will thrive then we will grow into great trees that will not only weather the desert heat, but we will provide shade to the weary, a place for the birds of the air to rest and make their nests. If you, all saints, root your hearts here, our sturdy branches and green leaves will show forth the vibrancy and hope of the kingdom of God for the sake of the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand together and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. For Foley, our Archbishop, Keith, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, especially 
Reverend Allison, Andrew and Margaret, Bill and Jane, Daniel and Marie, Greg Tipton, Mel and Julie, Daniel and Alice, Reverend Joyce, Pavel and Miss Melissa, Brandon Cook, and other ministries we support, Long Beach Rescue Mission, All Saints Third Saturday Meal for the Hungry, New Hope Grief Support Community, Long Beach Blessings, Teach Us to Pray, Wycliffe Bible Translators, and Habitat for Humanity. Lord, in your mercy, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all those in public service. Lord, in your mercy. For Noah on his birthday, we ask your blessings. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. I invite you to add your own petitions or thanksgiving at this time. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to All Saints. Let's find our seats. Good morning. I'm, I'm Father Mike, Associate Rector here at All Saints, and we warmly welcome you to worship this morning, um, especially guests, both those online and in person. For, for guests, first time here, uh, I, I want to direct your attention to a couple things in our bulletin. Uh, any section that has this kind of boxed part to it, um, the first page in, and also, for example, on page 17, um, instructions for receiving communion. I'd love to direct your attention to those areas. After the service, we'd also love to get to know you. you we'll, we'll be greeting folks in the back. We have um, coffee hour afterwards in the courtyard. Um, we'd love to, to get your contact info. Also in the uh, pews, there's a little contact card. Um, so we'd love to get to know you guests. Um, also, for those online, we encourage you to visit our website, allsaintslongbeach.com, and especially the Contact Us page. Um, we'd love to get to know you, and Father Scott or I uh, would love to, to reach out. A couple of announcements this week. So as we've been doing each week, we have our featured announcements toward the end of the bulletin on the back this week. Uh, you could look at those there. Um, one that I want to point out is... All of them are important, but the one I want to highlight is the annual parish meeting, February 27th, one 9 a.m. service followed by brunch. So we need sign-ups for that just so we could prepare for uh, food. And we're also preparing to uh, have some online opportunities for people to join. So if you have any friends who, you know, wouldn't be coming in person because of the pandemic, we're going to have the ability to join over Zoom as well. So please let people know if, if they're... Uh, hesitant to come. We do need a quorum for voting purposes. And then uh, a couple other notes. One is, you may have noticed the insert in your bulletin this week. We didn't have enough time to put this in our weekly email, um, but this is a note about our Lenten study. So every Lent um, during the week, usually a Wednesday night, we have a, a special Lenten study. And this year, we're going to be doing formational prayer practices. This is led by uh, Glenda Campos, who is in here right now, you could raise your hand. There's Glenda right there. And Glenda is a, a seasoned spiritual director, and each week we're going to be marching through different prayer practices. It's going to be a really rich time together. We do ask for you to sign up in advance so we could prepare for um, the people involved, and there's going to be um, some breakout groups and things like that that we need, we'd love to be able to prepare for. So please sign up on the kiosk in the courtyard if you'll be joining us for that. That will be over Zoom. Another note is over the, the last year or so, um, I've, I've gotten a fair number of complaints, or maybe not quite complaints, more people just kind of numbed by the wall of text in our emails. They're just very verbose. And so we, we've heard you, and we want to do a better job simplifying our communication. Ethan um, has been awesome at, at uh, he's, he's in the back playing guitar. Um, he's been awesome as our parish administrator of kind of simplifying some of our communication. And so the last couple of weeks, we have a new email. I say that because if some of you have, have just gotten accustomed to like archiving it immediately, please take a look. It's, uh, it's much more accessible and readable, and, um, and he's, he's done a great job with that. Um, yeah, please do read the emails. We, we really put everything that matters in those, in those emails. All right. Those are all our announcements for this morning. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is Yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and You are exalted as head above all. All things come from You, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father. In Your infinite love, You made us for Yourself. And when we had sinned against You and become subject to evil and death, You in Your mercy sent Your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, He became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to Your will, He stretched out His arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. 
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by His body and our sins washed through His most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in Him and He in us. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Breath of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me on my journey through strong deliverer strong deliverer be thou still my sword and shield be thou still my strength and shield When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Strongs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever sing to thee. I will ever give to thee. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Hallelujah. And I don't think this is appropriate, but go Rams. Oh. <laughs>